Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I'll be going over that big spring warm-up with near record high temperatures possible later on this week, followed by an active weather pattern late week into this weekend where severe storms will be possible, and then we'll go over the long-range weather pattern for late April later on in today's video. But if you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, now is the time to subscribe so you get all of my daily weather forecast updates it's a very detailed weather breakdown across southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, and also it's important to hit the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps to get as many people to watch this video as possible, so I definitely appreciate all of the likes out there. But going through today, we have a very quiet weather pattern persisting across much of the country. We have that ridge of high pressure. Again, a lot of sinking air, so not a lot of cloud cover. That means lots of sunshine shine across the eastern two-thirds of the country and that is exactly what we will be seeing through today so we still have that upper level ridge across the Great Lakes that will slowly start to drift farther east into the eastern Great Lakes and over the northeast on Thursday and then we'll start to pull down some cooler air across the western United States but look at these temperatures going into this afternoon we got mid 80s up here across the Midwest and even some 90s being shown into those drought stricken areas into the western plains. We could be in the low 90s in western Kansas, back down into the Oklahoma panhandle and the northern Texas panhandle and even portions of eastern Colorado as well. And look at as we go into overnight tonight, we still have those mild temperatures hanging around the 50s, the 60s out here across the Midwest, all throughout really the eastern two-thirds of the country. And then as we go into Thursday, April 13th, we have widespread 70s and even some middle 80s again being found across the Midwest, the Great Plains, and even some 80s over here into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast as well. We could be near 85 degrees in Long Island and New York City by your Thursday afternoon. But this does raise the concern for fire weather conditions. We have widespread red flag warnings here across portions of Connecticut, getting into Rhode Island, Massachusetts, but also back here across Michigan, northern Indiana, northern Illinois, back through Wisconsin, portions there of Minnesota into Iowa, and then that stretches back across portions of the Central Plains and the Front Range across eastern Colorado going through the next couple of days. And the reason for that is the relative humidity values are actually very low in that 20 to 30 percent range, which means there's a lot of dry fuels. So if you have a fire started outside with the strong gusty winds and the warm temperatures, it could spread rapidly as we go through this afternoon, and that is why we have a day one fire weather risk of an elevated to even critical fire weather concerns that do stretch here across the lower Midwest through the central and southern plains here through today. And then again, the same setup as we go into Thursday tomorrow afternoon with that 20 to 30 percent relative humidity values again across those very same areas and that's why we have those elevated to even more of a widespread critical fire weather risk especially across southeastern Colorado and in eastern portions of New Mexico on Thursday afternoon. But now we got to talk about our next system here. We got the strong flow in the jet stream across the northwestern United States with that trough and over top of that ridge across the southeastern portions of Canada and the upper Great Lakes. But we do have a cutoff low pressure system down here across the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see that starting to develop through the day today and that will push northeast and strengthen over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico as it approaches portions there of the New Orleans region and in towards the Mobile. Alabama areas as well on Thursday before moving inland Thursday night into Friday morning across portions of the southeast. And why this is concerning is because the Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures are actually boiling right now. We have some very warm Gulf of Mexico waters down here, and that's going to promote rapid strengthening of a low pressure system. So going through the day today, this is noon time frame. We got some of these outer bands starting to reach the immediate Gulf Coast here, especially near the the New Orleans region by noon time frame. Some of this rain will spread farther north, maybe as far north as the Jackson, Mississippi area and the southern portions of Alabama as well through the mid-evening hours here today. 
We could also see some of these outer bands start to move in from time to time across central and southern Florida from Miami up through Orlando, Tampa Bay. Just watch out for some scattered showers and storms through this evening. Then going through Thursday morning here, the morning commute, this low pressure system will finally be making its inroads inland here with a 999 millibar low across southern portions of Mississippi and southern Alabama with some of these outer rain bands pushing farther north inland as well through Mississippi and Alabama at 6 a.m. on Thursday. But we do have to watch the potential for severe weather. On the right side of the system, the right flank of the system, we do have a lot of energy. The instability or CAPE values, convective available potential energy, will start to grow into that 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram range by Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. And combined with some stronger mid-level flow here on the eastern side of the system and a pretty robust low-level jet, there is some concern for severe weather as well Thursday afternoon and evening with a marginal risk, a level 1 of 5 across portions of eastern Mississippi, much of Alabama here into Georgia, including the Atlanta metro area, down here into north-central Florida, the Jacksonville area, Orlando, Tampa Bay, Tallahassee, and then back across Panama City there on a Thursday afternoon afternoon and evening, and it does come with the threat for tornadoes. I do think the tornado threat could increase to maybe a 5% chance here as we get closer to this event. We'll have to wait and see what happens by Thursday afternoon and evening. But looking at this by noon time frame on Thursday, we got some broken bands of showers and storms across portions of Alabama, getting through Georgia, north central Florida. Any one of these storms could start to become severe with some rotating storms possible. That will go through the Tuesday or Thursday afternoon time frame into Thursday evening with more organized thunderstorm activity across portions of Georgia, and especially up there toward the Atlanta metro area by the evening commute on Thursday. And that will push farther north into the western Carolinas by the midnight time frame on Friday the 14th. But this also will be producing some heavy rainfall. So make no mistake about it. If you live right near the coastline there, so from New Orleans, Hattiesburg, Mississippi area, getting into Mobile, Alabama, Panama City, Tallahassee, and then much of Florida, and even up here into southern Georgia, we're going to see about an inch of rain in most of these areas. Maybe some higher totals. Again, near the New Orleans region, some of these areas could see a upwards of three, if not four inches of rain going through that Friday, the 14th time frame. So the flooding concerns through today into Thursday morning will be confined mainly to southern portions of Florida near the Miami region and across portions of the immediate Gulf Coast near New Orleans, southern Mississippi, and southern Alabama here. But as we go into Thursday afternoon into Friday morning, that lifts more inland. So that will cover more of central and southern Alabama, much of Georgia here, getting into southern South Carolina, and again, much of Florida during that time frame. But as we go into Friday, our next storm system we're watching is out here across toward the West Coast. This is that trough that's been hanging up across the Pacific Northwest over the past couple of days. That will start to swiftly move east starting on Friday, and this will start to end that near record high temperature streak we've been seeing across the middle of the country. This will be shifting across the Great Plains on Saturday, and it's going to be bringing a pretty strong cold front with it by Friday into Saturday as well. You can see that cold front starting to organize organize back here across the north central plains on Friday afternoon. That will shift east across the upper Midwest all the way down the Mississippi Valley here into the southern plains on Saturday and then push even farther east toward the mid-Atlantic and the east coast as we get into later on this weekend on the 16th on Sunday. So looking at the setup here on Friday, we got the very strong cold front ahead of that. We have 70s and 80s for high temperatures. Behind the cold front, look at the temperatures crash back into the 30s and 40s and and we have to deal with the return of moisture. So whenever you see warm temperatures for this time of year and those 50 and 60 degree dew points start to meet up together, we do have to raise the alarm bell for the potential of severe weather. We do have some stronger mid-level flow starting to move in as well across the Southern Plains through Kansas, Oklahoma, and North Texas on Friday, and a pretty robust low-level jet. So there's no surprise the Storm Prediction Center already three days out has put out a slight risk for severe weather across eastern Kansas, much of central and eastern Oklahoma. This does include the Wichita area, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, down here toward portions in North Texas, and then does include the Dallas-Fort Worth area and toward the Red River. So we'll definitely watch that on Friday. 
And it does come at the cost for potentially some significant severe weather on Friday as well with that hatched area here, 15% hatched area across, again, eastern Kansas, central Oklahoma through the heart of Oklahoma City, down just to the west of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. This mainly will be for hailstones over two inches in diameter, so those golf ball size hails, hailstones or larger. But there is a caveat to this forecast. So on Friday, there's going to be a capping inversion. It's the shallow layer of warm air aloft in the low and mid levels of the atmosphere that will actually prevent tall thunderstorms uh, clouds from forming and actually prevent bigger thunderstorms from developing and that is what we're seeing currently for Friday so it's more of a conditional risk though so we'll see you here at 10 a.m. on Friday we got nothing happening here again that cap is very strong on the atmosphere that will continue through the mid afternoon and late afternoon on Friday but you do see some green starting to try to show up here across South southeastern Kansas into northeastern Oklahoma, maybe some elevated showers and storms over top that boundary layer, but it definitely is very strong a capping inversion will prevent a lot of these bigger thunderstorms from taking off. But if they do develop, they could be producing some very large hail over two inches in diameter, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, and maybe a brief weak tornado. And then again, through the 10 o'clock time frame, the NAM model in particular really doesn't get too excited about the severe storm prospects on Friday evening. So we'll continue to watch it here going through Friday and kind of tweak that forecast. But that cold front will continue to push east on Saturday. Again, we have that warm sector very much so in place across the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And we'll be advecting those 60 degree dew points farther north. So the St. Louis area, southern Illinois, all the way down into the Gulf Coast, even some 70 degree dew points down across coastal Texas and Louisiana near the Lake Charles area, Houston, down through Victoria, Texas, as we get through Saturday. And the stronger mid-level flow rounding the base of this negatively tilted trough and also a low-level jet complementing that as well. We are going to be seeing a severe weather risk already four days out for Saturday. So the Storm Prediction Center has a 15% or slight risk of severe weather, which is 2 of 5 on the scale with the potential here across southern portions of Illinois, southwestern Indiana, getting into western Kentucky, downstate portions of Missouri, western Tennessee, and including the Memphis and Jackson, Tennessee areas, getting down into northern portions of Mississippi, eastern portions there of Arkansas and extreme northeastern Louisiana. This does also include Little Rock and Jonesboro, Arkansas as well on Saturday. And again, I think that risk could expand because as we go through the 7 a.m. time frame on Saturday, just some spotty showers, but with the heat of the afternoon, we're going to start to see a line of storms develop by 1 o'clock Saturday afternoon across central Iowa, down through portions of Missouri here, and that will extend even farther south as a massive squall line pushes from the Milwaukee area, down through Chicago there, eastern Illinois, down through the Mississippi Valley, through Memphis, all the way down toward near the New Orleans region by the late afternoon and early evening on Saturday. Some of those storms could be severe. They'll push east as we go into the morning commute on Sunday. And then by Sunday afternoon, maybe a few stronger, marginally severe storms could be moving up here across portions of Lake Erie, getting through Ohio into portions of Pennsylvania, western New York State, and then down through Virginia and Maryland as well, getting through that Sunday time frame. This storm system will also be producing some heavier rainfall. So if you get under one of these thunderstorms through the weekend into early next week on Monday, Okay. <laughs> you definitely could be seeing some heavier rainfall with the heaviest of the rain actually favored across the Mississippi Valley on eastward toward the mid-Atlantic as we go through that Monday April 17th time frame. Any snow with this system will be well far up to the north. So we're talking about northern and northwestern Ontario up near Thunder Bay here and even farther north from there. Some of those snow totals could be up over 6 inches if not approaching a foot of snow through that Monday April 17th time frame. So definitely some shovel and plowable snow farther north there. But behind this cold front, like I said, it's a strong cold front. So temperatures will be dropping a, a good 10, 20, if not 25 degrees below average as we go into Sunday the 16th across the Western Great Lakes. And that will expand across the entire Great Lakes region in the Northeast with at least those five to as much as 20 degrees below normal as we get into early next week on Monday the 17th. 
So you can see those temperatures on Sunday. Again, these are high temperatures. We're going to be back to near 50 degrees there in Chicago, upper 40s in northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, even some 30s back here across portions of northern Minnesota and eastern North Dakota. All the warmer air will be eastward or southward there on Sunday. And as we go into Sunday night, those low temperatures will drop well below freezing across the upper Midwest. We're back into the upper teens and low 20s up here across parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and North northern Wisconsin. And then as we go into Monday, much of the same, some of those 40s and 50s sticking around across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and parts of interior New England through that time frame. But you do see the southerly flow start to return back across the Great Plains. And that's the start of our next warm up as we go through the heart of next week, going all the way through that Friday, April 21st time frame with above normal temperatures favored across the Great Plains, especially the southern plains. And then we have another off moving in out west with below normal temperatures through the 21st time frame and that only extends even into the following week going through April 25th with that ridge starting to build really again across the southeast and the eastern two-thirds of the country and more active weather across the west bringing more cooler temperatures there across the Intermountain West and the west coast including California Oregon, Washington and Nevada as we go through the end of the month and this also brings again some active weather so as we have that warm up farther east and the active weather return we do have to raise the alarm bell again for potentially some more severe weather we'll be fine tuning this as we go through the next few days but just know severe weather could return toward the end of april well if you guys want to follow me on twitter for additional weather forecast updates now is the time to follow me on twitter you can follow it in the description down below it's hweather420 just click on that follow me on twitter to get additional weather forecast updates periodically throughout the rest of the week. But thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. A great rest of the week, and I will see you all in the next video.